Sailing around the world is a lot of work. It isn't all just beautiful beaches, tropical cocktails, underwater caves, and deep sea fishing. But sometimes that's exactly what it is. Hail yes. After a year spent preparing our sailboat Atticus II, we've finally cast the lines and have set sail on our way to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Our first stop has been the island of Bermuda, where we've joined a ragtag band of fellow sailors and are all enjoying the fruits of our offshore sailing endeavor. <laughs> All right, so Oso and I are on our morning walk in St. George's Harbor, and I didn't bring my camera with me because I just kind of wanted to enjoy looking around, but I wish I brought it because look at we're just stumbling upon. Is that not like the prettiest beach you've ever seen? And the walk over here was so cool. We like went up this hill, saw this abandoned, unfinished church, went through the golf course, and also just found a little private beach for us to hang out in. I think Oso and I are gonna play some fetch. Jordan is on his way back to the dinghy dock to pick us up, so our beach adventure has come to a close, but it was very enjoyable. We got a lot of fun stuff planned here in Bermuda, but one of the first things that we needed to do was upload like a bunch of footage that we've got and like an episode that's ready to go up. And our plan was to just use cellular data, but we blew through our cellular data. Turns out we made some friends and they offered for us to come over and use their internet and uh, check it out. Hail yes. Captain Rob. Good. <laughs> Good, buddy. Thank you buddy. so much for helping us out today. We, we really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Ooh, brings back memories. <laughs> Captain Rob. And our buddy James, oh, James yeah. who we met in Annapolis. Rob, how long have you been working on yachts? 10 years. I was actually about to hop on a, a Navy bus and really? I just didn't show up and, <laughs> because I got a call the night before saying, hey, if you can hop on a flight in an hour. So I took the flight and still here. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Yeah. And how about you, James? How did you get into it? Kind of like the opposite approach to you guys, really. <laughs> I bought the sailboat, went a little uh, financially poor, so I was like, well, how do I stay on the water and uh, still uh, get paid? I mean, for us, yachting was a really awesome way to like kind of enter into the boating world. I feel like the view is like nicer with like the shiny teak, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Desiree, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Man, so those guys were so awesome. What do you think, buddy? Kind of want to live on a yacht now. <laughs> yeah. James and Rob actually invited us out tomorrow to head out on that thing, their uh, fishing tender, to an early morning fishing expedition. So like, what a like fortuitous morning, you know? Bermuda's pretty awesome. I'm gonna get, I'm like- You're gonna go cry? Yeah, I'm preg pregnant. I'm lady's usually gonna cry. emotional, but now I'm like pregnancy emotional. So I'm like, <laughs> it's just so amazing. I'm just so happy. Yeah. Pregnancy Desiree gives it two thumbs up <laughs> and a bunch of tears. <laughs> All right, catch you later, love bug. St. George's Harbor, where we're currently anchored, is an incredibly well-protected natural harbor with a narrow yet deep water entrance, making it perfect shelter for even fairly large ships. This fact, as well as its strategic location, led to St. George's early development as the third permanent British settlement in the Americas after Jamestown, Virginia and Cupid's Newfoundland. Today, St. George's retains much of its tropical British colonial vibe with colorful houses and a Caribbean feel, although it lacks the intense heat and humidity of the Caribbean being more than 800 miles north of Puerto Rico. The town's most striking feature is definitely the uniform white roofs. In Bermuda, fresh water is very hard to come by as there are no permanent streams and the lakes are all brackish. So Bermudians have always had to collect their own rainwater. These roofs were historically designed to collect as much water as possible and to keep the water as clean as possible. Finally, as we walked down the many winding streets, we found that the intense turquoise of the surrounding water was almost always visible, as the island is both hilly and narrow. 
making an ocean view a very easy thing to come by. We are on a bus from our anchorage in St. George's Harbor. Apparently the, the bus driving here can be a little bit intense as well. So I'm, I'm holding on. <laughs> Where are we at, bud? All right, we're at the Swizzle Inn. Check it out. Oh. So the first thing that you do when you arrive at the Swizzle Inn is to order a full pitcher of rum swizzle. Actually, we're gonna do two. The Swizzle Inn is known as Bermuda's oldest pub. And from the dollar bills hanging from the ceiling, to the graffiti covering the walls. This quirky pub is a Bermudian institution. I guess somebody stole all the Sharpies today, so we're trying with these crayons to sign the walls. It's not very successful. The Swizzle Inn is also home to Bermuda's national drink, the Rum Swizzle. Rum Swizzle recipes vary, but most have rum, fruit juice, and a sweetener like grenadine. But most importantly, the drinks are not stirred or shaken, they are swizzled, using a swizzle stick. And no, I did not make any of that up. Just ask James Bond. If you'd like to learn more about how to make a rum swizzle, check out the link in the description below. I like your hat, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> From Cartagena. Nice. What's up, dude? How you doing? Good, man. James, What's up, man? thanks for getting us, buddy. Yeah. So what's the plan, Brandon? Where are we after? Uh, plan is we're gonna go trolling for some wahoo. That's pretty much what we're after. All right, yeah. cool, man. <laughs> so, Captain Rob, have you learned most of your fishing from uh, Brandon over there? Yeah, Brandon's got a lot of experience. Spent a lot of years doing it. First things first, what you do is you take the bill. All right, you can either break it or cut it. I like cutting it because it keeps it nice and even. To catch your dinner, you gotta make sure he doesn't have any more dinner in him. So you gotta rub along his belly here. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Get all the poop out of him. Because the other the fish aren't interested in that. And it helps the body of it flow better in the water. Then you kind of break his backbone a little bit. So you open up the gill. Typically, I'm doing this when we're not doing 40 miles an hour. Run the hook in. Nice. Okay, so you come through there. This comes right up through his mouth like that. Oh, hi, John. So that's it right there. I try to put it to where the hook is right at or behind the feathers. Every bait fish has the worst life ever. You know, like I always feel like bad people come back and bait fish. So if, it, if reincarnation is real, then dolphin, you're like, you're, yeah. you're holding for dolphin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting to spend the morning with new friends on an awesome boat, hoping to catch breakfast was so much fun. And it made me think about how crazy it is that here we are on a super yacht fishing tender in the middle of the Atlantic, and how opportunities like this can just arise out of nowhere when we're open to them. And even though we didn't catch anything, I felt so lucky to have met such friendly people and to take part in their extraordinary world for a short time. All right, well, sadly, we did not catch anything today, but I learned a lot from Brandon, and we had a great time on the water, so that was really, really cool. Plus, that boat was just gorgeous. The crew was nice enough to offer us some uh, wahoo and... I think tuna, too, yeah. Tuna? Yeah, that they caught a couple days ago, so we're gonna head over back to their boat, pick up our laptop, and then hopefully get some fresh-ish fish. <laughs> and I think we're gonna bring Oso to show Oso his first super yacht. Yeah. His first super yacht. <laughs> you know, it's the first one that you never forget. Were you yeah. a good boy today? Mm. What'd you got there, huh? Did you get a fish? <laughs> so Oso just like ran off. He's just exploring his nice new home without me. Oso! There you are, okay. you stinker. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be amazing, yeah. Ooh, we're gonna eat well tonight. All right, well, we loaded up on fish, found Oso, so uh, back to the boat. Did you like your super yacht experience? All right, so today we've got a dinghy adventure. So we got Desiree, we got Steve, they're stowing stuff in the bow locker, and we're heading up to Polar Seal to grab Sophie from Ryan and Sophie. What's up, Ryan? You Hello. ready for adventure? Oh man, I am so excited about today. 
personally, I'm excited to find out if this dinghy can plane with four people because if it cannot, this is gonna be a, a much longer trip. But that's one reason why we got the giant outboard is to potentially be able to plane with all these people and all this stuff. So let's see how it goes. Don't speak too soon, buddy. Say punch it chewy. Punch it chewy. Dial that. Punch it. There you go, Stevius. Get your way up. Get your way. Uh oh. I'm gonna blame it on the gallon of water that we have on the boat right now. Wah, wah. Officially known as a uh, Walsingham Nature Reserve, colloquially known as Tom Moore's Jungle, named after the famous poet Tom Moore, who used to sit over underneath a calabash tree and write poems. Oh, do you know any off the top of your head that no. you can <laughs> recite one, Tim? <laughs> recite it. Okay, so this is Tim. He's a professional tour guide here in Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> Tim is actually friends with Steve. Which, how did you guys meet each other again? That would be the internet. We were both members of a online forum, and then we uh, met back in 2015. Yeah. Oh, so you guys go yeah. way back. Yeah, we've known each other for a while. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the bird with the party tail. That is the Bermuda long tail. Bermuda long tail? Oh, really? Oh. Uh, it's colloquially known as Bermuda long tail. It's actually a tropical bird, so you can find these birds in lots of other places. They generally do very, very long uh, migrations, and they yeah. stay out at the sea for a very long time. And then we know summer's coming because they show up in the oh. spring. Desiree, you're so brave. Woo! Ah, this is so nice. High five. It's so good. Good job. We're back in crystal clear blue water. Yeah. So not only is the blue hole like super stunning and gorgeous and there's wildlife everywhere, but the trail to like get to all these cool little jumping off points is so fun. <laughs> it's like, parkouring through the jungle. There's one entrance, there's another entrance. Also the smell of the trees back here is like so strong and just feels so fresh. Oh, I just, having one of those moments where I'm thinking to myself, all that work on Atticus 2 has finally paid off. Okay, so we've arrived at Tim's cave. The rest of the sailor gang joined us. Oh, really? So it's all the super cool kids. Isn't that right? <laughs> Tell me when you find them. <laughs> Let's go. You ready, buddy? Yeah. How's it feel? It feels amazing. All right. Very slippery. Oh, what? There's like a boulder wedged here that you can like walk across the gap. That's so gnarly. It goes way back there. Whoa, very cool. Okay, so the three of us, the dream team, are heading off to do some free diving while the rest of the gang keeps hanging out at the cave. Let's get the dinghy in the water and head over to the dive shop.
Okay, so we are here at Dive Bermuda at the Grotto Bay Resort, and it is awesome. It's super beautiful. Today, we are going out on a dive boat, but we're not gonna be diving. We're just gonna be tagging along to go free diving, which is super exciting because we haven't free dove in like a long time. How long has it been since we went free diving, bud? I gotta say at least two years. So I'm a little bit nervous because I think we're gonna be kind of rusty. <laughs> yeah. Sophie, what do you call these in France? Fleet. Fleet? Fleet. Okay. Fleet. Fleet. <laughs> yeah! Nice. Yes. Good. High five. Good. 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 We are going to try this with your hand. Just <laughs> How is this, Jordan, for it's, you? It's really great. I think I put a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> going it's called North Rock and it's a very north tip of the reef around Bermuda and it's actually one of the northernmost coral reefs in the world and how much visibility did you say there was today minimum 200 foot Wow could be more than 200 right now it's crystal clear It's interesting how much we have to sacrifice in order to attain these perfect days. From boat projects to seasickness, Oso's travel paperwork, system failures and weather routing, there's so much to do, all in search of days just like today, that it can be easy to forget that this is why we're out here and this is why we do all that we do. But there's nothing quite like being 40 feet below the surface, weightlessly drifting through caves of coral to help us remember what it's all about and to fully appreciate the moment.